Hello everybody, so today I want to quickly cover Stoneco, Stonie, ticker symbol STNE. It's a stock that's up uh, 89% actually compared uh, to a month and a half ago. Um, and it's a stock that had, it, that had its investor day uh, and, and, and guided a great expansion really over the next five years. And you can see in, in their investor day deck, uh, 350 slides in there. The one that really caught my attention is that they define their business as this, uh, barely any banking, just a little bit and mostly payments. And this is where they see their business headed in 2027. That's as far as I'll go with a qualitative assessment uh, this video is mostly a video about the numbers, and I'll get to the numbers in a second. I just want to say that it may feel strange to be buying this stock at 18 bucks right now, when, like I said, a month ago, a month and a half ago, roughly, it was trading 80% lower. And this is a stock that you could buy around 10 bucks for the longest time. And now it's back at 18. Now, if you were buying it in early uh, 2023, you, you'll find this price to be much more bearable because it was trading at 13, 14 uh, bucks, roughly. But I think it's important to realize that the, the almost up 100% we can see on this chart over the past 40 days uh, is actually still a down 80%. It's still down 80% compared to February of 2021, which was the, the peak valuation. And that was a period of peak optimism on, on the future and on growth and on interest rates uh, staying at zero for a while. Now, if you follow this channel, you know that I believe interest rates will go back to zero quicker than most think. And I believe that interest rates will stay at zero for a very long while. I believe the US will take the same way of Japan when it comes to monetary policy. That's why I have no issues seeing these valuations of 2021 being the normal, knowing that for a company like Stone Co, this was not a crazy valuation. This is a sound business. This is a business that is growing very fast. No investment advice, of course. But this is, this is a business that's leading. It's the leading payment, small business payment processing company, the leading provider of small business terminals in Brazil. They have about 3 million of them. They have a nice 2.7% take rate on billions and billions of transactions. That's the nature of this business. And when I look at the valuation of a company like Stoneco, it is still the second cheapest stock that I have in my universe. It is it is about 70-80% more expensive than HIMSS on, on my metric that I use on this channel, which is enterprise value over gross profit, over revenue growth. This is a this is a valuation metric. This is a spin on the peg ratio of Peter Lynch. What this number asks, the question that this number asks and, and responds to is how much am I paying for that growth? How much am I paying for one percent point of future growth? And if you if you're if you're used to my full spreadsheet where I go over all the stocks, you know Stone Co is always in the always in the top three. It's always in the top three consistently top two cheapest stock. If you want to use um, valuation metrics ratios that you may be more familiar with, you have enterprise value over sales. That's a 2.33x. That's dirt cheap for this space. Remember, this is a mostly intangible business, right? 74% gross margins. This is a business of intangibles and it's trading at two times sales. It's kind, it's kind of crazy. And enterprise value over trail in 12 months. EBITDA, EBITDA, as you know, is what, what I typically use over cash flow. I prefer EBITDA over cash flow, proxy for cash flow. It's trading at a 5x uh, enterprise value over EBITDA. So very, very, very cheap. You're, you're your yield, your EBITDA yield on this is about 20% EBITDA yield. So obviously you can't get that in a, in a, in a treasury wheel, obviously. And using the metric, I'm going to use a metric I don't use on the channel, but I'm going to use adjusted net income at the metric. And, I, and I'm going to tell you right now, the trailing 12 month adjusted net income ratio, right, is 24x. The market cap to adjusted net income as a ratio of 24x M cap over net income. 24x. Definitely not my favorite metric, definitely not my cup of tea, but the reason why I'm telling you this metric is because I want to briefly go over the guidance. And uh, this is the general guidance that they've given us um, uh, up until 2027. And I'm just going to assume it's the end of 2027. You could assume it's sometime in 2027. But they've, they've given us a guidance of 4.3 billion reais, more than 4.3 billion reais in 2020. 2020, in 2027. So with that metric, I can estimate what the stock price would be, assuming that this 24x 
market cap over net income, assuming that this 24x ratio holds, which remember what I just said, I believe it will increase. Uh, I don't believe it's going to stay that low. I believe it will increase because interest rates are going to keep going down. But assuming it stays the same, so let's go through the numbers. Assuming it, it stays the same at the end of 2027, we're going to have 4.3 billion reais, and that's 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 the negative scenario because we got it more, but 4.3 billion reais, so that's 880 million USD. You take 880 million USD in net income and you multiply it by 24. That's a 21.12 billion in market cap by year end 2027. Today's market cap is 5.3 billion, 5.37 billion. So this is exactly this guidance. And by the way, this guidance kind of kind of didn't make it to many news outlets, uh, but this guidance was from November 2015, and you can find it on their website from November 2015. So with this guidance, that would be a 3.93x potential in the price, in the stock price in five years, and that's a negative scenario because I'm not counting the buybacks in there. Um, but but So let's call it roughly a 4% in five years, which equates to a 34, 32, 32% CAGR, so 32% return each year compounded over five years is what this guidance implies when I look at the stock like Stone Co. So even though the stock is up more than 80%, compared to the lows of 30, 40 days ago, I'm still buying that stock, knowing that we have more catalysts. Like I just said, there is the buyback, a shy buyback. If you follow this stock, you know, they have much more on the balance sheet. They, they could do a much bigger buy, buyback. They don't. And we also have some news that they, they got a, a foreign development uh, financing facility to help small businesses. They got a 467 million credit facility uh, on the cheap, on the cheap uh, of a financing facility, which when again, they don't need because they have so much cash, but they're going to take it. Uh, and 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 this is this is two outstanding pieces of news that have also uh, flown under the radar. This stock in general is still undercovered underfollowed and, and and to me this is a, this is a stock that will um, get back to its heights because it is leading in its space in Brazil and it has great expansion plans beyond just processing payments as you can see from from, from this so um that's that's based on the guidance could this be a forex in 5 years that's that's how I see this stock, and I keep adding to this stock and this company. Obviously, this was not investment advice. This was just entertainment. Hoping you were entertained. No investment advice. Please like, please subscribe, please follow me on X at Beat the Denominator. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.